Accounting equation and Excel. Void check, prior period adjustment. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation in Excel. Here, first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you might want to begin back there or you could just construct your own worksheet as we move forward or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, started with a blank worksheet but basically using a template going forward, adding to that template as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing, looking at the accounting equation rather than the debits and credits, recording transactions in accordance with the accounting equation, thinking about a situation where we have a voided check. And when we think about a voided check, we can have a similar scenario as any transaction where it has we're adjusting an error that was made in the past. That's basically what a voided check is. In other words, if we wrote a check and the check doesn't clear, then at some point in the future, we want to take the check off the books because it keeps showing up in our bank reconciliation, for example, and it shouldn't be there because it never cleared because whoever received it possibly didn't cash it or maybe we entered it two times or something like that. Now, if it's in the same period, the easy thing to do would be to void it, which would be similar to deleting it, except that voiding it gives us the paper trail, which we want. We want to have a paper trail, therefore we void it, adding another journal entry instead of deleting the journal entry. But there's another problem, and that is that the check could have had an impact on the timing statement, that being the income statement. And if that is the case, and we closed out the income statement in the prior period, typically month or year, then uh, if we void it, it's going to mess up the retained earnings because we're going to make a prior period adjustment, which has already been closed out. So that's another thing that we'll kind of keep in mind. Now, also remember that a lot of software these days uh, might be using bank feeds, so more than writing checks. So you might say, hey, look, this is obsolete now because I don't write checks anymore. What I do is I, I use the bank feeds, and if I'm on a cash-based system, then I'm not going to have a situation where I wrote a check, and then I sent the check out, and someone just didn't cash the check, and therefore it never cleared, and I have to avoid it. That might be the case, although there's still going to be transactions where you might record it first. If you're in a larger type of business, uh, a larger company, you might be doing more electronic transfers, but you might still be entering the transaction as you make the transaction, which still leads to the possibility of a similar error. We recorded a transaction that had not uh, yet cleared. But even if you're on a cash-based system and you don't write physical checks, the practice of the voided check is still applicable because it's the it's the just default scenario of a situation where you have something on the books that you need to remove from the books, but it's a problem because the income statement has already been impacted in the prior period and it'll mess up your closing entry, which is why if you work in any accounting department or you deal with a tax preparer at the end of the year, that's a good one. 
that if you mess up the prior period numbers, they're, you're going to hear about it, right? They're going to say, what, what happened here? Because my numbers don't roll forward uh, to the current period. So it might happen with a voided check. It might happen uh, with entering two transactions. Sometimes happens in bank feeds. Sometimes there's an error where you know, they, they entered two transactions, uh, got entered, and you have to remove them. Uh, or you might have a situation where your accounts receivable has a sub ledger and you have things in the accounts receivable that you're not going to be collecting on or so on and so forth. Same with the accounts payable type of sub ledger. And these are kind of adjustments that have a similar characteristic to them that you want to be careful removing them because they're in the prior period. Okay. So that said, uh, we'll go to the blank tab and add our information. We're starting out with just that 50,000 in cash as the initial investment. The other side's in the equity. So let's start by just writing a check. So we're going to say 115. Oh, wait a sec. Wrong space. I'm going to say on 115. Let's just say it's a miscellaneous expense. Miscellaneous expense paid with a check. So again, if you don't write checks, you can think of it as an electronic transfer. Even if you're using the bank feeds and you let the bank feed record the transaction, recall that the check form is still the form used as a data input tool, typically by software, when you do an electronic transfer recorded with the bank feeds. All right, let's say that's $1,000. Now, what's going to happen there? Well, cash is going to go down. As we saw in a prior presentation, I'm going to put negative to the cash. And the other side is going to go to the expense of we just put it to miscellaneous, assuming that we consumed it, which is going to be a decrease to the equity. So there it is. Let's go and let's make this a little bit wider so we can see that. It's nice to be able to see stuff. And so let's go back on over and let's tab through some zeros. Zero, 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 tab, tab. Zero, 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 zero. And there we have it. Now this transaction impacted the equity, decreasing the equity, but it's broken out on the income statement part of the equity. So if you had a trial balance, it's the equity section, which would be equivalent to retained earnings, is only showing the amount from the prior period before the income statement, income and expenses has rolled into it. But the total equity is the entire thing, which would be reported on the balance sheet. So this account right here, owner's equity, which is equivalent to retained earnings if it was basically a corporation, would be reported on the balance sheet, including both of this transaction at the 49000 right? Because the income statement would close into it. The income statement then showing the activity that is happening. That closing process is what's going to cause us problems. All right, so let's let's put the balance over here. Let's say balance, and let's copy down our formula this way. So now we've got uh, fifty thousand, my or or the one thousand decrease, and there it is. So now let's put the balance. So I'm going to put that over here and just sum this up equals the sum, which will subtract fifty minus one thousand. Copying that, pasting that across. So this is where we stand. I'm going to paste it just the formulas only so it doesn't overwrite my beautiful, beautifully colored uh, statement here. Not colored just to make it colorful, by the way, although it is very nice, but it has meaning, tons of meaning involved there. All right, so now we can see that here in our balance, 50,000 minus the 1,000 is 49,000 in total equity when you look at it from an account accounting equation standpoint. So if I copy this down, boom. Now, what does that mean? It's useful all the time I go back to the liquidation. If I liquidated the company, I only have $49,000 now that I can get back into my checking account because the miscellaneous expense, we're assuming we consumed it in order to help us generate revenue of which we haven't been able to generate any as of this point in time. So that's why there's $49,000 in the bank and it's in the business checking. But if we liquidated, that's what we, you know, basically the, the net worth of the company. All right, let's say now on uh, 115, like the same day, we void, we void 
the miscellaneous check. So we're going to void it now. Why? Because maybe we entered it two times. Or and this would happen even if it was electronic transfer, right? Or it might have you might have pulled in from the bank feeds two uh, transfers instead of one. For some reason, the glitch happened. It got doubled up, which still requires you to do bank reconciliations to find those errors. So we're going to go, okay, so, so that means we have to reverse it. So all we're going to do is say, okay, we're going to void the $1,000 check. So I'm just going to say now cash is going to go back up because the check didn't clear, it's not going to clear, we have determined, and therefore we incorrectly decreased our checking account by a thousand, we have to put it back in there. And so now you might say, why would I do that? Why don't I just delete this one, <laughs> right? You could, you could do that, but the problem with that is that you lose the audit trail. Now, if you, were, if you happen to see that you had bank feeds that, that put in multiple checks like it was a duplicate then maybe you would delete it in that case that would be the easy thing to do but normally in the accounting system if we do a data input what we want to do to fix it is reverse it with a journal entry so that we still have the audit trail in place now notice in this case we're in the same period it's the same day so i want the audit trail therefore i'm going to avoid it instead of deleting it and I don't really have to worry about the prior period adjustment because it's not like this was a check or a transaction that was entered in the prior year. Therefore, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm cool to just reverse it uh, in the current period. So I'm just going to say, let's reverse it here, adding it back into miscellaneous. I put it into miscellaneous, but I didn't really actually spend it. So I'm going to put it back in play in there, meaning let's, let's put our zeros in here. Zero, zero. Oh, no. Oh, what happened? Zero, zero, zero. I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. Okay. Oh, no. Don't put a zero there. Boom. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. So then I'm going to, I've got underlines in the wrong place. So I'm going to un underline these ones, un underline those, and put the proper underline here. Underline. Oh, wait a sec. No, that's not where the, that was where the underline should go. Dang it. Let's undo that. Okay. And now let's, let's put the balance in here. So if I copy this down, copy this down, I'm getting distracted by my explanations and I'm just losing it, man. I can chew gum and walk at the same time. Okay. So this one should be a positive see how this is out of balance now so what happened i put a negative here i should have put a positive here adding it back in and now i'm in balance it's the green zero turned red so that was clearly done on purpose for demonstration purposes copying this out fifty thousand in cash for the balance that's the new balance i'm just going to paste that formulas only paste in here formulas only pasting here formulas only boom so so now of course look what happened to the income statement we increased our an expense that doesn't normally happen because because well because usually the income statement accounts only go in one direction we only buy expenses which increases the expenses but that increase here is a decrease to equity so expenses always go in one direction and then revenue minus expenses decreases the total equity so here we did the opposite though we we reversed the expense it's going in the other direction that doesn't normally happen unless something weird happened such as in this case where we wrote a check but it didn't actually clear and therefore we reversed it to the income statement account now that's not a, that's not an issue so much right now because again it was in the same period so that's cool easy thing to do we just kind of reverse that let's look at a situation where we're where the check was written in the prior period which causes us more of a problem and if you just reverse it your supervisor is going to be like they probably won't even let you do it right they'll lock the system but if you're doing your own bookkeeping this is a common error 
because what happens is uh, people people try to like clean up the books uh, because it gets messed up, right? Because there's two there's outstanding checks and there's outstanding accounts receivable, and they try to clean it up. But by doing that, they totally mess up all these prior year transactions which messes up the rollover of retained earnings and that becomes a problem. So it's something to keep in mind. So buy office supplies for check in the prior year. That's what this prior year means. Let's say it was 2000 this time. So we're just writing a check again. So once again, cash is going down and then the other side is gonna go to this time supplies. Once again, on the income statement, we're not tracking the supplies like inventory. We're just expensing them in this example, assuming that we consume them relatively soon after purchase. So now let's put our zeros in here. That's our normal check transaction. Zero, 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 zero. I should just put zeros in the whole thing again. I still think I should just start that way, but I'm, I'm still debating if I want to do that. So now let's put the balance. So balance. So now we're going to say balance. Something's wrong with the spelling. Let's just say equals that one. And then we'll sum this up just the last two. So here's where we were before 50,000 minus 2000 brings us to 48,000. I'm going to right click and cut or just control C copy pasting that across, pasting it formulas only, because I don't want to mess up the color coding because the meaning will be lost. The colors are giving us meaning, man. It's not just arbitrary for no good reason. All right, let's copy this down and then we'll copy this down and then we'll copy this down. Boom, boom. Everything's back in balance. Let's put some underlines over here. Put some underlines under these. Uh, it didn't do it. Where's my underline? And then we'll put an underline under these. Is that right? To the 50. And then this is the balance. Hold on a second. Let me undo that. I'm a little out of it. So this is an underline. That makes sense. And then we have the total and then we have an underline here. Right. That makes sense. And then I need to copy this one down again. Copy this down to the new total. That's why it wasn't doing it. And then we'll put an underline here. Okay. So now here's our new. So here's our new total. All right. So now we're going to avoid it. But the problem is we're imagining there was a closing entry right here. So let's let's do the as of 1231 of the current year. Now, this is kind of messing me up because I didn't put years now. So it gets a little a little ugly. But as of the end of the year, we're going to do a, a closing entry. Right. So I'm going to say this is going to be the closing process. So what happens with the closing process? Basically, a lot of times software does this for us if you're using something like a, like a QuickBooks. But if we don't understand it, then that leads to these prior period errors. So what's happening is this income statement is going to roll into equity. So all of the income statement accounts of which we only have one right now, I'm going to close out to equity, I'm going to make it go to zero by saying this is just going to be 2000 or I could just say it's going to be the opposite of this, right? And then, and then this equity is going to be the negative sum. I'll say negative sum of the income statement, which is only that two, right? So there, so there's my journal entry basically. And so if I put my zeros across this, doo -doo -doo, zero tab, zero, 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 zero zero and we do our totals so we'll put our totals let's put an underline under here underline underline and underline and then we'll sum it up little darling 
sum it up. Do, do, do. So we'll sum that up and we'll copy that. Paste it. Va uh, formulas only. Paste it. Formulas only. And paste it. Formulas only. So you can see what happens here. So now, now I still have the same. See, if I took the total equity, it's the 50,000 minus the 2,000. So as of 1231, I would still be reporting on the balance sheet 48,000, but then the income statement would be reporting this 2,000, right? But on the, but then once I close this out in the next period, we close out the income statement because it's a timing statement to the the balance sheet. So now. We have in the next year, we just have in the equivalent of retained earnings, owner's equity, the, the full 48,000, which is retained earnings up to that point, income generated plus draws uh, uh, or, or I'm sorry, plus investments or issuance of capital stock if it was a corporation minus draws or dividends if it was a corporation. Nothing's in the income statement. So when I void this check now, if I void it and I say, okay, on two uh on on 115 let's say we void the check in the current year i'll just say cy current year and it and it was the two thousand dollar check so we're going to need then a journal entry to not mess well let's do it one one thing at a time what's going to happen if i void that check right now let's copy this down first i need to copy this down so this is boom, boom. And so that's where we stand now. And so I copy this down and that was the closing process, which had no impact on the accounting equation because both sides happen within the equity section. And then I actually, I need to delete this right now and then, and then do the balance. So this should be the balance again. So then I'll copy this down. So we're, we have the, we're in the same situation here from an accounting equation standpoint, but the equity now has everything basically in the balance sheet, nothing in the income statement so that we're ready for the next period, which is the timing statement to count up. So then we're gonna say, so now let's say that we void that one. So it's gonna happen on, on 115 that we're going to void it so so but the when i void it it's going to void it as of the prior period so i'm going i'm going to do the actual process of voiding on 115 but then it void check uh which impacts prior year and this is the problem with most accounting software now you have to determine like if if you're working with accounting software you have to see what is it going to do when you void the check uh, it makes a paper trail, but usually it voids the check basically in the date that you entered the check. So then, so, so some software will kind of help you out and try to say, Hey, look, do you want us to make a journal entry so that it doesn't mess up the retained earnings for the prior period? And it might try to do that for you, which means it'll do what we're showing here automatically, or it might not. So that's what you have to kind of determine, like what software you, are you working with? So the problem is here, we're going to say, all right, if I void the check, what's going to happen? Then the cash is going to go back up because the check uh, isn't going to clear. But the other side now is going to be going into the office supplies expense. But that's a problem because we already closed out the office supplies expense last year. Uh, to the retained earnings. And if we're in a tax, an income tax system, like in the United States, then we would have written off the 2000 as an expense last year, right? So we overwrote off an expense. So you would think you'd have to kind of add it back like in the current year. So if I, if I say plus, we're going to say 2000, there it is. So we're going to go, this is going to be uh, uh, zero, Let's actually represent it this way. You see, it's it's right here, but really it's going into the income statement last year. So it's it's gonna mess up basically the equity. So it's actually going into the equity. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll put it right here. I'm gonna say it's gonna be plus the 2000. 
So then if I put my zeros in, I'm going to say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, doot, doot, doot. Okay, boom, boom. And then let's put our uh, balance. So I'll put this equals the sum of these two. Copy that across. Control C and then paste just the formulas. And then paste uh, the formulas and paste the formulas. And then I'll put an underline under these. Underline underline and underline okay so most software is going to reverse it to office supplies but it would have reversed it to the office supplies in the prior period prior year or month let's say it was in the prior year well that means that in the current year uh it's messed up the retained earnings so that means that like if I was trying to do financial statements from year to year, my statement of retained earnings will not match out, which is a common problem when you do tax preparation, especially if you're forced to do a balance sheet. If you're not forced to do a balance sheet on the income on a, on, on a taxes in the United States, you're going to it's going to be a problem because you're going to mess up the deduction, right? Because you might deduct it twice or not deduct it because your retained earnings is messed up, right? You're not properly flowing over the retained earnings from one period to the to the next, because as of the end of last period, the retained earnings should be 48,000. Uh, and now because I deleted the check, as of the beginning of the end of last period or the beginning of this period, it's now at 50,000. And that again, very common problem for uh for tax preparation for small businesses in particular as they try to clean up kind of prior year books and to have these prior period transactions so how do we kind of fix that so we we could do a a journal entry uh so to not mess up prior year so what we're going to do is i'm going to say okay i'm going to let the software just remove it like that let's just keep the same number i'm going to let the software remove it but then i'm going to put it back on uh the books so i'm going to say then i'll put it back on the books here and reverse that transaction so i'll say 2000 is going to reverse it and we'll put it back in do, 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 the cash of uh, the 2000 do, 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 do. okay let's let's copy this down before I go to any further copying this down copying this down and then copying this down okay there's that transaction and then I should before I do this I should do a balance so let's let's cut this and put that here and then I'll format paint this up here and put the balance again, sum. Well, wait a second, let's not do that. Let's not do it that way. I'll just copy it down like this. Boom, boom, and boom. We'll put an underline here. Okay, so there we, so now the journal entry not to mess up the prior period. So that's going to be here. So there's the 2000 and the 2000. Let's add our zeros across. Do, 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 zeros. Okay. So now we've reversed it. Now, again, you might say, well, why, why would I do it that way? Because I now I voided it and I just revert and then I just reversed the exact transaction I did to void it because of the paper trail we want to avoid it and that takes it out as of the day it was written which means but we can't which will put it into the income statement but for the prior year which was already closed so in essence we're going to reverse that as of that same date in the prior year so our retained earnings is back to where it should be so now i'm going to say let's show that by doing a balance Let's do this again. Du, 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 du. And then we'll do the balance here equals the sum of these two. Copy that. 
paste it across. Do do it. Paste it across. Do do it. And then we'll paste it across this way. Do do it. And then we'll put some underlines in here. Uh, oh, wait. Not italics. Underline. And then underline. And then underline. And then let's copy this down. Copy this down to do it. Copy this down to do it. Copy this down to do it. And then underlines here. All right. So that puts, and then we'll do a journal entry to record it in the current year. So journal entry to adjust income statement in current year. So then what I'm, so then we'll record it again, which, which is going to add it back the 200 here or 2000. But then when I go over here, it's not going to go to retained earnings. Retained earnings now is correct because it reflects what the retained earnings was last year. And, and I'm going to go to the income statement as of the current year, having a, a, uh, 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 so I just sneezed there. A two a two thousand kind of going the wrong way on the income statement because remember the office supplies usually all expenses only go in one direction, decreasing retained earnings, right? But in this case, it's going in the other direction. Why? Because it's basically kind of acting as income on the income statement, which makes sense if you think about it from an income tax perspective in the United States, because expenses are good for taxes. We got a deduction of expenses last year that wasn't legitimate because we didn't actually pay the 2000 because the check didn't clear. That means we, in essence, should be recording income this year in order to correct it. Otherwise, we'd have to go back to the prior year and adjust our, our taxes. And we don't want to go to the prior year and adjust it. What we want to do is say, hey, look, that was just an unclear check. I'll fix it this year. And instead of adjusting the retained earnings, which which would not hit the income statement at all, we have to have an increase or go in the other way on the expense account so that it basically acts like income. So it's going to increase our income from a tax perspective. That would be kind of bad, right? So that's the idea. Now, again, if you, if you do accounting from a bookkeeping uh, textbook, sometimes it's harder to see this, these little wrinkles that come into play but when you get into tax practice this rollover re of retained earnings issue and prior period adjustments will be important oftentimes <laughs> let's put an underline here and here and then here and then we'll put a balance again so i'm going to say then the balance is going to be uh, equals the sum. Oh no. Oh no. K okay, paso. We'll copy that and paste just the formulas. 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 And formulas. Right. So now, now you've got the four. You've now you voided the check. And, and uh, you've made the, and, and you didn't mess up the retained earnings. Retained earnings is proper. And we've got the adjustment happening in the current year rather than messing up the last year. So, so again, some software will do that for you when you void a check. But the same principle happens for any prior period adjustment, which often comes up anytime you're looking at a sub ledger and trying to fix it to reconcile it to the general ledger or deal with the fact that it doesn't line up to reality, such as with accounts receivable, adjusting information by customer, accounts payable that has the, the who, who you owe money to, inventory, subledgers, all of those have a similar kind of problem where if you just go in and start deleting stuff, you're going to mess up your retained earnings. And, uh, and so that's where you want to, so you have the similar kind of issues going to come into play. You have to figure out what did the transaction do? Did it impact the income statement last year? If it did, or whenever it was recorded, 
how can I make the adjustment so it doesn't mess up the retained earnings, which might involve voiding the transaction or reversing the transaction with a journal entry, possibly doing it to, uh, uh, you know, doing two journal entries to reverse it and then record it basically in, you know, the current period would be the general idea. All right, so that's going to be the idea. Now, if you if you didn't void the check, notice you could say, well, why would I do the, this two method transaction? I could simply uh, uh, do it in the current period where I increase. Why didn't I just do this transaction in the beginning as of the current period? I record it as an increase to the to the to the expense account in the current period rather than in the prior period and then an adjustment to cash in the current period. And again, the reason for this particular transaction is because of the audit trail. If you did that, you're not gonna see in the prior year that that check was actually voided. What we wanna be able to see is in the prior year, hey, look, this is the transaction. Here's the error right next to it because it wasn't, it wasn't legitimate. So I reversed it in the prior year, which is what the voiding of the check does. But the voiding of the check will, that means that we've recorded it in the prior period. It'll record it in the, so then we have to reverse it again to get the retained earnings correct and then record it with a journal entry in the current period. Also note that when you do this transaction, it's going to result in three hits to the cash account, which will impact your bank reconciliation. So when I go to the bank reconciliation now, I'd like to get this thing off the book. So I had it, I had it on the bank rec. Now I want to get it off the bank rec. How do I do that? Well, uh, when I voided it, now then I would have uh, the the two items that I could match up against each other to void the check. So we had then uh, this original check, and then we voided the check. So those two should should cancel out, which the software will probably pick up automatically. And then you've got these other two that we entered with a journal entry, which will be easy to identify, and we can check both of them off because they were entered with a journal entry. Your your other option possibly is to use like a clearing account to enter these two transactions so it doesn't hit the bank rec. But I think it's easiest just to recognize that you voided it. And then when you do the bank reconciliation, if you check both of those off, they will cancel each other off and you'll be able to clear them off of the bank reconciliation. All right, let's copy this down. Copy this down. And hopefully I've got everything settled up here. Copy down, settle it up. So now we're at 50,000 once again. And and that's interesting. We're back to kind of, because we avoided everything else. That makes sense. All right, let's say review. Do a quick spell checky. Uh, depreciation, ignore all of those miscellaneous i should put a period okay okay i'm cool with that all right looks good